Good morning. It's Monday morning again, and I think we are about through with January. Isn't that good to hear? Today, the calendar says the 30th of January, but I think it's more like the 87th of January, depending on your experience and whether or not you are in a warm climate. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and Niantic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Niantic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries, an outreach program to help those find and connect with a community of faith or who are spiritual and not religious. And I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. I am so excited to welcome you here this morning. It's been a month focused on forgiveness, the practices of forgiveness, how we get ourselves prepared to forgive, the benefits of it, all of the power that comes from it. And today we're going to focus on how to grow that muscle to become a more forgiving person. Many of you have reached out to me in private con comments, contacts, and phone calls and messages, and I'm grateful for each one of you that are embarking on this journey. Some are gearing up to start, others are just wanting a partner along the way. However, I can be of support to you. I want to do that. I want you to have peace in your life. I want you to let go and release all of that stuff that is holding you and binding you to a past hurtful event. So let me know how I can be of support, or if you just need someone to speak the words to, I can do that too. So let's jump in today. How do you become a more forgiving person? Some people think it's just part of your nature. Maybe it is, but it comes with intentionality. Just like living a healthy lifestyle might be a part of someone's nature, but it comes with a disciplined and intentional set of actions. A person just isn't born to be healthy. A person becomes healthy by making decisions on what they eat, how they move their body, and so forth. The same is true of being a forgiving person. We have intentional choices to make about the life we want, the life we don't want, and how we are going to navigate through it. So I want to bring that to the forefront. It's not going to just happen. It's a choice we make. Living with forgiveness, again, does not forgive the other person. It does not absolve them of any fault or anything else. Forgiveness has nothing to do with the other person and everything to do with what is in here in you. To forgive is to say, I am not going to be attached to the hurtful emotions of that past event. Forgiveness practice means I am going to do the inner work to heal and release those hurtful emotions and get on with my life. You know, when you have forgiven someone, when you are able to see them or to think back on that event and not feel yucky and have that feeling in the pit of your stomach, then you know that you've completed the work. And so that's what our goal is. Our goal in the work of forgiveness is so that we can live life on our terms, not dictated by other people. Now, why would I say it that way? Because if I run into someone whom I've not forgiven, my mood changes. And my mood can change at any time they show up or any time that my memory goes to that past event or that a past event is brought up. I don't want that. I want to have control of my life. I want to decide my mood. And I get to. I get to do all of those things. And the one thing I can do to ensure that happens is to choose to be a person that practices forgiveness. So how can we become more forgiving? One, we decide to. And we make that decision based on uh, several things. There are a lot of things I have listed out on the blog site, so make sure you check it out. I'll link it in the comments, but it's at lightlifeandloveministries.com slash blog. 
I'm going to highlight a few this morning. One is decide that it ends here. Oh, real quick, I want to make a distinction. The process is similar, but there are some differences if we are in a continued relationship with the person we need to forgive. If we have someone who we don't have as part of our life that has hurt us in our past, there is a way to forgive that person that is pretty similar but has some differences to someone who is a part of our daily lives or a part of maybe not our daily lives but a regular part of our lives that we're going to be interacting with. Maybe they're part of our family or our circle of friends or at work, what have you. So know that there are some nuanced differences there, but the processes are still pretty similar. One, decide it ends here. And this is true in both cases. If the person's not a part of our lives, decide that you're ready to be done with this. You're ready to remove their influence and impact from your life. If they are a part of your life, decide it ends here. You're not going to keep going back and forth, one-upping each other, continuing to hurt each other, it's not a competition. You're not going to keep escalating things. It's time to end it here. Number two, change your thought process. It's really easy to keep thinking about the past. And have you ever uh, worn a path in your yard or somewhere? Somewhere you walk frequently, maybe you've worn a little path or others have and it's easy to follow along in it. We can do that emotionally. When we think about past events, our mind goes through those well-worn ruts. We think the same feelings. We say the same things that we wish we would have said. Uh, we do all of those familiar things. We bring it back up in a familiar way. So the second thing here is to change your thought process. When the event comes up, when those feelings come up with it, pivot your thinking. Uh, picture a place that you love. Uh, think about a goal that you've created. Find something to be grateful for. Uh, my favorite is to engage your senses. Get present to what is actually in front of you right now. So do that by touching something. What is the desk feel like? What does a tree feel like? Or what do, what do my car keys sitting here feel like? Touch something. Uh, what can you see? What different things can you see right in front of you? What can you hear? What sounds are present in your environment? Uh, what can you taste? Be careful with this one. Just gonna leave that there. And you know, these engaging our senses in that way helps us to become grounded in the present, what's real, what's in front of us, what's now. Okay. Um, quit competing. Quit competing. Quit trying to one-up each other in who's right and who's wrong. Ask yourself, what do you really want? If you are in a relationship with someone and you keep one-upping each other and who's right and who's wrong and keeping score, you're going to be unhappy ultimately. So do you want a relationship with this person? Decide what it is you want and what that looks like and focus on that instead of the scorecard. And the last one I want to mention about this, and again, there are several of these things on the blog. I haven't even talked about half of them today, but drop the advisors. We have a lot of well-meaning friends and there are people, man, they've got our backs. If we're ready to go, they are with us. They're right behind us, but they can also keep that hurt fresh. They can be a roadblock in doing that work of forgiveness. So forgiveness work creates freedom for you, not for them. So if they're offering advice, politely thank them and then listen to your heart and do what's right for you. 
So these are just a few things you can do, but whatever you choose, I invite you to do this work. This is the, I am convinced, the most significant thing you can do in your life to improve it, to make your relationships healthier, to be happier. And again, reach out to me however I can help. If you just need someone to listen, if you need someone to remind you why it's important to you, whatever it is, or a more active role, let me know. I want to help you get to this place. That's my passion in life and reach out to me. Again, I'm Melissa Ebkin and I'm the pastor of the two churches in Iliopolis and Niantic, founder of Light Life and Love Ministries and host of Pursuing Uncomfortable Podcast working on a book that's coming out this spring it should or this summer should be out in july called pursuing uncomfortable and it's all about leaning into the difficult stuff in life and forgiveness is definitely some of the difficult stuff so again that's a wrap on our discussions about forgiveness if you have any questions let me know all of these videos are available on youtube so check out the channel there if you want to revisit some of these or check out the blog site. So until next week, that is it. I will see you again next week and we'll begin a focus on obtaining inner peace. Bye for now, friends.